Hello and welcome to the Avella Saturday podcast for a brand new episode this week, um, highlighting all about the, the return to Ibrox <clears throat> and me obviously having a dodgy throat um, at the start. Uh, I, the return to Ibrox, uh, we'll talk about the Livingston game, uh, there was no um, re- reaction on our uh, YouTube channel to that one, so we'll talk about it all here today. We'll give our uh, thoughts and opinions on the upcoming two games against Malmo and Dundee United as well, looking at our team predictions, looking to see what Malmo could bring as well. Um, but the first thing that just happened about five minutes ago, the draw, if we beat Malmo, um, came out, uh, Ludogorets. Uh, of I think Bulgaria um, and Olympiakos obviously everybody knows him so if we get past Malmo that's the, the tie we could be looking forward to um, what's your thoughts on the two of them? <clears throat> ah, it's tough games mate Just oh, Malmo's a tough game as it is already but tough games again um, but I do feel we have the quality and we have a good enough squad to hopefully get through and then get into the group stage Aye definitely the, obviously the, the main thing is Malmo we'll get to that as we as we go on, but um, first off, it was just great being back at Ibrox again uh, at the weekend there. Uh, 23,000 fans felt like a lot more were there. It was really a uh, good atmosphere um, going into the game and that. It's just nice to be back around um, everybody again, just sort of simple things on, on the way to the game and all that. So, um, but it means a lot. Uh, I just uh, great being back. Uh, just great being back. Um, I brought. No, hopefully, it, it continues. I'm happy to see you were back, man. Happy to see that you got to finally go back to the game with Dan and that. And obviously, you posted a picture up with the squad um, <laughs> on the on the class. So, no, it was good to see you enjoy the game, mate. Uh, no, I mean, no. one of the players we adore the most on this channel, Scott Wright, scored that sensational goal right in front of you, mate. So, couldn't have been better. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're quite right there. Um, I Scott Wright just uh, I, don't, I don't know what he was up to man just outside of the foot strokes into the, into the corner but uh, great goal for him starting off the game though a um, few surprises in there definitely uh, McLaughlin uh, Bassey obviously we talked about it uh, before the game uh, last Tuesday and we thought Bassey might come in for Barisic um, which we were, were right with but Surprising still uh, to see McLaughlin in there at, at the start, but still a comfortable, uh, strong side to get the job done. Absolutely, I mean, still, still a, a decent squad, as we said, to get the job done. I was surprised Parson wasn't playing. I thought he, he might have played, uh, as I say, tab a bit for fourth and Parson at right back. But I was just happy to see my boy Calvin get a start um, and McLaughlin as well. I don't think it's anything we're concerned about. Uh, McGregor will also play um, Champions League games, so... Aye, it was good to see. No, nah, definitely. Good side going into it. Fashion, obviously, getting a league debut as well for the start. I um, was looking to see what he would offer as well. But, again, another clean sheet for John McLaughlin. Um, he just keeps building them up in his uh, Rangers career. Um, but it was a good performance. We started off um, really strong. Like The first 10 minutes was just, I think, the... For the, way the the crowd was and stuff like that, they they really took to that the players and that pushed them on the first ten minutes to get the first goal. Um, had a few chances was like Ken Aribo and stuff like that after the first goal, but it came for Fianna Saji. Great delivery comes to him at the back post. He just leaves the two for dead and great finish. Ibrox rocking. Um, and I one nil exactly what you want first game back. Uh, Ibrox without many fans, one nil as fast as that. As fast as that, I mean, I was hoping more would come. I oh, we're going to get two or three more, but um, no, I thought we played, I thought we played well in the first half. For me personally, I felt like the game felt a lot of friendly. I just mm-hmm. it felt comfortable <clears> for us. <throat> I think it was also a bit different um, in the Champions League game, obviously, but this game felt just really too comfortable for us. And I felt we, played, we did play really well, I thought, um, in portions of the game. I was a bit, um, as I said, obviously, fashion started, but. Um, I was a bit upset that Zedek didn't get a look in in the game, to be honest, but also we'll get on to that. But no, first half I thought we did, did really well. It just felt like a friendly for me, mate. I just think we... Nah, I, I felt like good. the game was really flat um, ah, after right. the first sort of 20 minutes. Like, with the way the crowd was and all that, the team came out and then the whole thing just sort of <clears throat> went flat after that. I, I don't know why. Um, and I, you heard that in Gerard's uh, press conferences and stuff after the game. He said he wanted a bit more for... Really, up until we scored the second goal, there was really n- nothing much um, in terms of 
chances or stuff like that. It was really flat. I can get what you mean with the friendly sort of situation. But throughout the game, Stephen Davis was just unbelievable again, just continuing yeah. where he left off. Uh, Calvin Bassey made a really good account of himself at, at left back as well. He, the only thing he needs to work on now to make him a real top player is he's, he's crossing. It's, as soon as he gets that <laughs> knuckled down, uh, he's going to be an absolute star. Um Defence again, really unscathed. Livingston, did they even have a shot? Did they have a chance? Can't remember anything of of the sort. I think um, I think when you came on, you might have had a chance, Jack. I am. I know. I seen I seen myself come on. Of course, you get the uh, you my dammy or oh, you know Jack Hamilton, <laughs> but um, he didn't offer much uh, either. And Livingston were poor, to be honest. I was expecting. Basically, what we saw, they were robust, they were hard to beat, um, hard to really break down, like the usual you get for Martindale. And it was also nice to see David Martindale give us a guard the honour again, uh, the only manager to do that. So, um, fair play to him, he's a real good guy, him. Uh, and then, as we worked all the way through the team, Tav was great again to assist, um, starting the season, as he needs to go on as well. Uh, Joe Rebo was, was good. Kamara, again, was just, like, doesn't seem to break a sweat. He's just he's too good. Ryan Kent was always off on the something going forward. And then Hadji when he was on the park, he looks like he's got a yard of pace on him now. He looks like pre season has done him a, a world of good. He looks a lot faster. Uh, he looks a lot bigger as well. Um and more to come for him. Hopefully his injury's not too bad. The only one I was a wee bit disappointed on was fashion. Uh, he was un he was unlucky uh, with the majority of his chances. He was trying, he was trying, but just really didn't come off from uh, against Livingston. I wouldn't be too harsh on fashion. I think when he did get a chance to do it, you've seen his pace. Mm-hmm. I do think I do think uh, a lot of them did play uh, really well, obviously, but I do think some of them were a bit, still a bit. I think one or two of them are still pre season mode, if I'm, I'm honest, mm-hmm. mate. I do think Kamara was solid, solid as always, but I've, I've obviously seen better performance. First game of the season, you won't be too harsh on him, but um, Simi Kent, there was a chance for. I think it was the second half. I think Scott might have played the ball in and it was coming to fashion. And then Ken just ran in front of him and took it. And I thought, you doing, you be dafty. Give him the ball. Aye. This is his moment, all right? You understand? Second goal. Second match at home. You're doing that. Shave the facial hair. What is this with the facial hair now, Ken? Come on. <laughs> no, I'm only joking, mate. Uh, but no, I just... I, I thought it was just a friendly game, mate, to be honest. I think everyone played really well. Good performance all around. Obviously, for the fans back in, for yourself and your dad, it was, it was obviously good to see us get a, a win. I mean, Keymar comes on and he just does, just it's, like, it's nothing to him, to be honest with you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just another goal, another pose, another, another video for the Instagram, innit? <clears throat> nah, you know, he fucking loves posting on social media, <laughs> doesn't he? Uh, he does, always posting <clears throat> on social media. And I, the players for the bench, it came on as well. Lundstrom added uh, a lot to, to the performance. Uh, for, for times when we fell flat, as I said, um, he came on and added a lot of energy. Uh, he's going to be a real big player for us, I feel, Lindstrom. Uh, just, he looks like a bruise on the middle of the park. I cannot. He looks like Darren Till. Like, they're both Liverpool, <laughs> and I'm just like, you look like Darren Till, mate. Like, um, yeah. I, uh, he, he was really good when he came on as well. Uh, Scott Wright, of course, um, when he came on early in the first half. Gets his first goal at Ibrox. What a goal it was, by the way. Unbelievable strike. Um, and then, as you say, Kemal Roof just doing what he does. And I feel like he's benefited a lot from Jermaine Defoe's coaching with that one. He's always sniffing about. And that's a sort of Jermaine Defoe goal, that one. Like, trouble in the box. He's, he's pounced and he's got himself a goal in the open day as well. And it was also nice to meet all these players like, at the stadium. Like, I've not seen, obviously, Kemar with uh, Ibrox before, uh, Scott Wright. Uh, I've seen Hadji, obviously, but Cedric Kitten and Lundstrom and all that up was warming up and all that. You could see in Ruth's face when everybody was clapping on, he was like, oh, I love this. So um, that, it was nice to see all the players for the first time at Ibrox uh, in the flesh. So all round, good day. Um, good to be back. Obviously, there'll be better performances to come, but 3 0 first day of the season, was, you'll take it. Obviously, but at the same time, I was disappointed that Cedric didn't come on. I think Cedric did deserve a shout-in for that game. He scored throughout the season. He's looked like probably one of the most sharpest players. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I just felt a bit, dis- I was a bit disrespectful. I, for I, him, I, I felt disappointed he didn't on, come on. Uh, Kima just comes on straight away. I'm like, yo, big man's been scoring goals all through pre-season. You're doing the whole crossing the ball in. You've got a big, you've got a big man on the bench. 
Mm-hmm. We would clearly came on and he would, he's, he's looking to get that on his head or maybe bring it down to his feet. So that was, that, if I'm looking at the negative side of the game, but we're still doing that thing where we've got the big guy on the bench mm-hmm. and we keep crossing the ball in to the no, small man. Who's fashion going to get any of these? I <laughs> know, uh, I noticed that myself. He, he, if I know he's, I don't know what height he is actually, but obviously he's not going to meet the headers um, often. And you, you do wonder why the balls were going in the way they were. But um, I've, I've still got faith, obviously, in fashion throughout the season, his first season, his first game, sorry, in front of the crowd oh. and stuff like that. He will get better and better. But I did feel really sorry for Cedric Atten sitting on the bench. I was like, right. Same as you. Big man's done no harm in pre-season. I thought he was actually going to start the game, but then to get no minutes during the game, I, f- I felt really uh, disappointed as well. But I f- I've got a really strong feeling he's going to start on uh, Tuesday. Tuesday? I don't know. If it was Tuesday, think so. I, I just don't so, be honest with you, I don't think Gerard trusts him that much. I don't think nah. he, I just, for me, if you're bringing him out of reform before you even going to Cedric, I don't know. I just feel like he doesn't trust him as much as he probably trusts, obviously Kemar was one of the top goal scorers last season, so fair play to hell, but Cedric deserves a look in, man, he's, mm-hmm. he's scored through the season, and if he does play on Tuesday, then I hope the big man gets goals and proves why he should be starting. No, definitely, um, but then, obviously, first game in the books, 30-70 to in the league now, the title defence, of course, uh, was underway, uh, moving on to Dundee United again, we'll talk about that uh, towards the end of the episode, but the first game coming up Tuesday, the Champions League adventure starts uh, Malmo away in Sweden. Uh, their last two results uh, mm-hmm. against Teche KL Sinki. Um, two victories, I believe. So they struggled though in the, in the second game. Um, and it was two each, sorry. It was two each in the second game. I They struggled. Oh, wow. uh, they, they were 1-0 down within like, the first minute. <clears throat> and I, I didn't really think much of Helsinki, uh, to be honest with you. I felt if we got them, we would we would be easy through. But Malmo, so it's been a tough game of history with them. 2011-2012 uh, time, saw a, a programme uh, from the game. Nikita Jelovic was on it, uh, brung a tear to my eye. Um, but aye, 2021 Malmo, Rangers again, over in Sweden. What's your thoughts going into this one? It's a difficult game. Really difficult game for me. Um, I remember them when, but when they were in the Champions League last time. I can I can I remember them 2013, 14. I think they were decent then. Mm-hmm. The Champions League. I do I don't think it'll be a difficult game, obviously. Um, but I do think we'll I'm hoping fingers are crossed, everything's crossed, Jack. We do the business and we go through. I do expect Big Holanda to come back in, Barisic to come back in, your usual starters to come back into the, the fold. And then also second leg coming when the second leg comes up, I'm hoping. The man himself, the main man, Alfredo, comes on no. and reminds everyone why he's the top dog here, why he's the head of the table, all right? Fashion no, no. comes along, how are you doing? He's the head of the table. But no, this game, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and it's the first Champions League game in forever for us. Mm-hmm. So, wow, man. It's- Let's just hope we do the business. That's the main thing for me. Exactly. And hope the legal rules obviously scrapped so you can't come away and be like, well, I want each straw and be happy about that. I sort of hang with me, but they're still doing the whole, I don't know what it is, but I'm seeing it still in newspapers and all this, like, but the aggregate, the aggregate kind of like going like free two or something. I'm like, mm-hmm. shouldn't that not be scrapped? Is it no just... Like, uh, well, st- like, still two legs. Overall, like, like, the, whoever wins the, the game wins. Um... Two, two legs again are back for, for last season. Obviously, it was better because of the one game. Um, oh. But no away goals. Uh, so it means we basically need to go out there and win both games uh, or get a good enough result to then take back to Ibrox. Obviously, the away goal rule, it's a one each draw would usually mean you were in the better position, but it doesn't really mean much anymore. Um, and then if it comes to it, uh, it goes to extra time and penalties, as we've seen with Celtic uh, midweek against Mitchelland. So... You don't really want to be in that situation again. Uh, they were in if you've got a game uh, coming in uh, Saturday. So we need to get the job done to, well, this week anyway. Uh, next week, if we go to the extra time, of course, it wouldn't be ideal. But um, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident. It'll be a tough game, though. Uh, I've, it comes under the same sort of bracket as Legia Warsaw for me. When we played them, I thought they were a really tough outfit. Um and I feel Malmo sort of falls under the same bracket as them. We obviously went away to Legia Wall, so I got a nothing each draw. And then 93rd minute or something like that, Morello scored. So I think it might be one of these kind of 
tricky wee games, but I expect us to get a result over there. We what we're taking over, of course, will be without Balogun, Roof, uh, Kamara, three big misses, of course. That's what mm. the, the big squads for. I feel that Lundstrom will come in for Kamara. Um, Barisic Alanda, mm. I feel will start uh, in place of um, Bassi and uh, Balogun as well. And then Cedric Kitten, uh, Sakala, we're going over there with the two strikers. I feel they'll both play a part. Um, and I feel big Cedric's only lead the line for us on Tuesday. And uh, I'll be happy with that, uh, to be honest with you. Um, but looking at, at Malmo, as I said, they struggled. Their season has been underway for a while now. Um, but uh, they're looking good. They won the league last year. So, I, as we said, it's not going to be an easy game. Um, it will be a tricky game. Couple of players to look out for. Joe Inge Burgett, uh, he played with Celtic, <laughs> played with Celtic a long time ago now. Um, and then they played against Malmo a few years after he left, and he ended up scoring a hat trick or something like that against them. We beat them, so uh, he's a right midfielder. Uh, difficult player to play against. He's in his thirties now, right enough, but um, always a difficult player. Kolak up front, number nine, uh, will be a, a handful for the centre halves as uh, they always will be. And Christiansen looks like their, their talisman in midfield, um, now attacking midfielder. Um, he scored like uh, against Stilsinki as well. So a couple of watch out for. Um, Moy Sander at the back as well, former Werder Bremen defender, um, plays with him as well. So got a good side. Um, but again, I'm expecting our boys to go over there and get a, get a result. Just home, fingers crossed, mate. As I say, fingers crossed, we can get a result. Um, and I, I think I'm thinking about Lundstrom as well. I feel like Lundstrom's developing a good relationship with Ken. I think as soon as he gets the ball, straight away he just knows give it to Ken because he'll do something. With it. So, um, I know it's that as well. What we can last couple of friendlies as well he's played. Um, but no, this this game's going to be massive as we say. Hopefully, we get a positive result. Um, I do, as I said, mate. I do expect the big cats to come back in. Sort of, it's nice to. Give Calvin Bassi that, that game of the weekend there, but as you say, I do expect him to come back in. I'm home. Uh, Cedric does start, mate. I'm, I'm home. You've got that right, and Cedric does start. I'd love to see him start, but um, who, who knows, mate? Who knows? Well, what I'm going with my team actually is obviously we all know Gerard has um, put out the idea he wants to play Patterson and Tav in the same team, and I feel like he's been saving it for Europe. I've just got a sneaky suspicion that he's going to play this 4-1-4-1 system uh, with Tavernier at right midfield, Patterson at right back, Davis holding midfield, Lundstrom and Aribo sort of further advanced. And then uh, Tav obviously right mid, uh, Kent over on the left and then at not front. I've just got a sneaky feeling he's going to do this in, uh, in this game because I'm, Patterson has to play some point. Um, and I feel going away, you don't obviously want to get beat in Europe, it's a big game for us, so you would want defensive cover. And you've got the two on the right, um, obviously two right backs as well. Um, you've got Davis holding in midfield, so, sort of a strong um, foundation to break down. Aribo and Lundstrom can then be advanced midfielders, and you've got it to go forward as well. But um, I just I've got a feeling he might might do that, but again, could be wrong. Oh, that's I'd be interested if he did do that, and maybe if he was saving it for Europe. Um, obviously they're already right inside the amount of pace we'd have man. good god mm. <laughs> but no that would be interesting if he did save that for Europe I could see see your logic and thinking about that as I said yeah again that'd be another good one just to get the balls in if the kids playing up top get the balls in get him on his head um, but no I mean that does sound interesting I don't even know man that would that does sound interesting I could see that as then see it could be unfair and score right not starting the game because I feel if we go the 4-3-3 three, three, score <laughs> right starts for me I don't know if Scott Wright starts this kind of game. Maybe Dundee at the weekend or something, but I don't think he'll come on and he'll get managed, mm-hmm. but I don't know if he'd start this kind of game. Um, I feel like Hadji's a big miss if, if he's out, if he's injured. I, I feel like he would probably would have started with him at first. Ah, definitely, he would have started with, with Hadji, but who knows? I don't know if Scott will. It'll be one of the, I think he'll be one of them where he might come on and get a couple of minutes. Maybe the last game, you know, Gerard likes last five mm. minutes. He'll be, you know, nah, I don't I... know why he does that. But um, no, that would be interesting. They've just got a formation in my head now, mate. I'm, I'm linking that. that is I, a, I'd love to see it. It's just, it's sort of. It's a way. Suits in a way, Ty. Aye. Definitely. That would be, that would work. Because these are, well, obviously you do your research on your team, but. Be interesting, mate. I would. I'd like that. 
couple mm-hmm. of goals. Exactly. So we'll see what happens tomorrow with that situation. But um, aye, as I said, tough game. I'm really looking forward to it right enough to see us test ourselves against uh, another level of opposition uh, going for the Champions League now. We'll need to be playing against the big hitters to get into it. Um, so long may it continue. And as I said, there's a tie waiting with Ludogorets or Olympiacos if we get past Malmo, um, which is going to be exciting as well. But that's got the feel way when we played against that leg of also game, I'll always come back to that. Like at home, crowd there, if he's desperate to qualify for Europe and if you're in that playoff, um what a night that could be at Ibrox. But we won't look too far ahead. That's the that's the thing, as you say, with the Liger Walsh, like those kind of teams are kind of similar. They're very difficult to play against. Um as we know. So especially if we get Olympiacos away, man. Oh dear me. Thank God the away goals are gone in that because oh Mm-hmm. I think that's a difficult time, man. You've seen him give Arsenal a good game last season in Euro- Europe, uh, Europa League. So, uh, difficult games, but hopefully Rangers come through and we, we get to the group stage, get a big titles, get a big titles. Yep, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward <laughs> to starting the journey tomorrow. But after that, um, we move on to Dundee United away from home at uh, half 12 on Saturday. The games are coming thick and fast now. I'm, I'm loving it. Um, Dundee United obviously get their campaign off to a Negative start. They'd lost two 0 to Aberdeen yesterday. Um, but uh, they're back at uh, Tannadice. Uh, first time they'll be there with fans as well in the Premier League. So it'll be an exciting occasion for them. But again, Dundee United really didn't. Uh, they didn't really do much against us last season. Obviously, they scored one goal against us at Ibrox, which was um, no team really done in the league. But apart from that, they really done um, nothing. Any trouble is. Um, and I expect us to fully go over here with any team Stevie picks and, and get a result at Tannadice on Saturday. I'm the same, mate. I just it's, it's no, it's that's what I'm saying that with these kind of games now. I think you can experiment in, in the Dundee game as well. It's just mm-hmm. same with Europe, also with parts. And I do think you can experiment in these kind of games as well. I'd love to see Scott get a full 90 minutes in this kind of game. Yeah. Um, that, I think that would be perfect for him. I thought when he came on, he was really one of the positive lights in the Livingston game. But I, I'm just as I say, mate. Football's back. Rangers are back. Finally, we can just the games are coming thick and fast, man. And finally, mate, just it's glorious to see. Yeah, I know. I was just waiting for that Saturday to come. Just get the season underway again. Uh, and here we are uh, talking about Dundee United now. It's Shankland, obviously. He's still at Dundee United. There's been so much talk about him for the past few years. Is he staying? Is he going? Is he going to wherever? He's been linked to us. Um, obviously, he's not that at that level that we need anymore, but he's still at Dundee United. Um, you still get players such as Nicky Clark, Mulgrew signed for them. Benjamin Segrist, obviously, is a really good goalkeeper in the league, I feel. Um, he's always difficult to, to score into as well. Um, but they've kept a lot, as we said the last weeks. They've kept a lot of what they that what worked for them. Uh, Dundee United last season, and I again, I just expect us to to go over here and and get a victory. It's it's weird to be in that situation where I'm not really fear anybody that we play anymore. Right. Like, I'm just I'm expecting us like, to go over there and get a victory. Um, and that's sort of what's been built for, for the past season is this sort of confidence going anywhere and believing we can get a victory. Same with Tuesday as well. I believe we can go there, get a victory. And I'm just I, I'm just loving the position the squad and the club's in at the moment. I was watching Ross Wilson's uh, documentary sort of thing on the, the Rangers channel. And he's got his head screwed on for what he wants to do at the football club. Same as we steam Gerard Day too. Or they, they just want to drive us to, to the top. Um, and he speaks with a lot of sense, um, especially with what he developed the under 18s and stuff like that as well. Charlie McCann coming in for Man United the other day, um, promising one for the future, um, building the first team, keeping a hold of their best players and stuff like that, improving the, the facilities across Ibrox, the training ground and stuff like that. Like, I just thought it was a really good interview with him. He just uh, he speaks so much sense, and I'm glad that we have somebody in the position that he's in to sort of manage your club and, and take it forward with everybody else involved so um, oh, that's, that's, listen, that's the position we're in that's, that's what I'm saying as well you don't want to get too overconfident I, I, I wouldn't want to in these kind of Dundee games but it's the same with Ross Wilson like, not only are we making fantastic signings on for the par- on the park but also off it with guys like that I haven't seen the interview I'll check out obviously after this because mm-hmm. 
Oh, it's so important to listen to what this guy says and things like that. But as you say, the recruitment that we've had, I had who was it was on the punditry, as I said to you. What's his name? What, Derek McKinnon there. Aye, Aye, Derek McKinnis. Dipstick <laughs> on about or whoever wins whoever wins the league spends the most in Glasgow. I think what was the last time you played a big big fee for a player? I think it was Ryan Kent off the top of my I know it was. And Ryan Kent was the first player that we spent big on in fucking years. Like, right. like, I can't remember. I, Time we ever spent seven million bar Kent. So you're looking at Ryan Kent, and then what probably behind that, what Haji? Haji, we played three and a half million, yeah. I think. Aye. Aye. So I think most of the business we've done is, I mean, Kamara speaks for itself. You're looking at the freebies, you're like John Lundstrom, fashion. So I'm not having that kind of talk. I just think the recruitment's been fantastic. Um, and as you're saying, you, you're confident going into these games now. As you say beforehand, we would be. God, let's just hope we can get something out of the game. Now it's a confidence but we're going to go there and hopefully we get maybe one or two, three or four, who knows. Mm-hmm. Um, but you don't want to disrespect the opposition, as I say, mate. You of always want to not, give, them, give them credit. You know, as you say, that keeper, he is a, a decent keeper. I still think their manager looks like a taxi driver. He looks like he should be driving the taxis at the weekend. <laughs> I still think he does. <laughs> um, but I'm just hoping for a good performance and hopefully Scotty Wright can start a game and put an shift in. So the team for Dundee United then um, could be McLaughlin again um, for, for the league. He might start with what he done last season um, with McLaughlin. So I'm going to go with McLaughlin. Tav, uh, if he does experiment with the Patterson thing at right back, I feel like he'll go back there. Goldson, I think Balogun will come back in after not playing any minutes um, in the, the game on Tuesday. Bassey might come back in as well uh, for that reason. Barisic obviously back for an injury and stuff like that. You won't want to play him, risk him, and then lose him in for the, the week's uh, game on Tuesday. Davis Kamara obviously back in as well. Aribo, uh, Scott Wright, as we said, if he doesn't start um, in Tuesday, he'll definitely start at the weekend. Sakala uh, and Ryan Kent. And you never know, Alfredo Morelos could be involved in this one as well, uh, off the bench, or he could be just in the squad or stuff like that. So that's definitely exciting as well. But you think sort of similar for that team, you feel that a lot that started the Livingston game will, will come back in? I do think uh, a lot that did start the Livingston game could come back in. I could also see a situation where maybe he does give Barisic the start um, in the Champions League game, and then maybe through I don't know, 75th minute, second half, he might bring Calvin on just to, you know, watch just him. Just d- depending on how it's going, obviously. Exactly. I think the main one is obviously the Ibrox leg of the tie. That's the main one. Hopefully everyone's fully fit and ready to go for that one. But uh, with this game, I could see the same sort of team. Um, I like the rotation of the keeper as well because, as he said, they're two top world-class, well, in my in our opinions anyway, mate, they've mm-hmm. been class for us. They're two, two class keepers and um, they've definitely shown that they're both first first teamers. Obviously, McGregor, we know he's, he's going to play the majority of the season, but it's nice to see McLaughlin get some games. I do feel a bit harsh for him sometimes. Mm-hmm. Where he, he may not get the, the praise he deserves sometimes, but I think he's been fantastic. Probably should be the number one for Scotland, um, but that's a different day and a different topic. But no, I'm, I'm happy just... As I say, mate, I'm happy with whatever team goes out there. As long as they put a shift in, get their performance and mate, we go back up the road with we, another you know, three points. That's the main thing at the end of the day. But I'm hoping, as I say, I'm hoping Scotty, Scotty Wright does start um, mm-hmm. to feel like he does. I think he's got smaller and I think he's back to his frame that he was when he first came out over, obviously, with pre-season and that. He was looking like uh, Hulk Hogan with the 24-inch pythons, you know, but... Um, yeah. I don't know where the Pythons have gone now. <laughs> and I feel he's still he's he's looking a lot better than he did when he joined the club. He looked, looked like he's stick insect when he joined. And now he's obviously been bulked up and stuff like that's what Gerard wants him. But um Haji as well. It just seems all the players are in good physical condition. Um so that, that's obviously great to see. But um I I'm I'm looking forward to the Dundee United game as well. As we said, respect the opposition, but we're going there with confidence to go and win the game, of course. And again, I'd love to see uh, Sakala and stuff like that get more minutes. Alfredo Morelos be back involved, get him ready for uh, Tuesday against Malmo, because um, we're, we're going to need him regardless, say what the result is on Tuesday. So exciting times I'm to be just, a Rangers fan. Sorry, mate, but I'm just hoping that we get a video, right? This is if the Rangers media team aren't thinking about doing this, they should be. I want a video where Morelos were at WWE belt. 
and I want him walking out with whatever music he wants. <laughs> Seven Nation Army, give him it. I want him holding it up, and I want him saying, the main man's back. The, the, the King of Kings is back. Sorry, Sir Poets, this is the King of Kings. He's back. I want a nice video for Alfredo. I know you'd you want know? him to see with that uh, uh, suit and the shades he was wearing with the belt. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I thought he was going to... I, I would have loved to see uh, the players get a photo with that belt, but... Um, Never happened, but uh, we can always dream, can't we? Uh, but that would be that would be fitting for his return, uh, of course, uh, to the Rangers squad. So we've got that to look forward yeah, to. Uh, <clears throat> see with Sakala as well. I mean, see that I don't know if he's Yankees. I thought Yankees like a natural forward. The Yankees more a sort of kind of winger that like, can play like, in a forward position. I feel like he's more a winger. Um, I feel uh, like he's more suited to being like an inside striker rather than an out-and-out striker. I feel like if you play Kent and you maybe play Sakala on the right and then have an actual striker in the front, I feel like that'd be, that'd be strong. I don't... He, he can still do the role, of course, uh, playing uh-huh. up front himself, but I don't feel like that's his best position. Um, I feel like he's going to I'm either just... play behind the striker or around the striker. Um, I don't think himself would be a good focal point. I'm just thinking all that pace he seems to have, it would be... So much more beneficial to play him out on the right, maybe. Uh-huh. So I'm just thinking when Alfredo comes back because it's the main dawn. As I keep saying, that's the head of the table. No, no. Well, why, you know? it's, do you know, but see, on Alfredo, it seems like everybody seems to just forget about him when he's away in the, in the summer and all that, and then he comes back and everybody loves him again. Like, I never want this guy to ever leave, like, ever. And he comes back and he goes straight into the team um, and we'll, we'll see his qualities again. Absolutely. I, can't, I was looking at his uh, post he put up yesterday, obviously, with him celebrating um, in a Rangers jersey. And it, all it is is just Porto, man. Come to Porto, come to Porto. No. Nah, he's not going anywhere, man. I just don't want him to leave, man. This guy, he's, he's just say, I just think sometimes people do forget what the guy has actually done, man. Some of the moments he's gave you. Obviously, the red cards and the sending off, but I'll take that way with the player he is, man. Mm-hmm. Just, you just adore the guy, you know what I mean? Same with or majority of the players you just love them you just how can you not love this team um, but also when you look at it as well Kimar's there I don't know Kimar's I think Morelos and Kimar are the main two for the like the number one forward for the club number one forward sorry mm-hmm. at the club I just think fashion would be so much better out maybe out in the wing um, no you, know, I guess you don't want to see that guy become a third striker then behind day oh. two and not get any games you want to see him play play a lot of games because like him starting at the weekend's a big sign for what's to come. I feel that this is a heavy hitting in roof. This is what we're on about when you're talking about Ross Wilson and, and Gerard. Look at the headaches that his fans we're thinking about is or put him out in the right, and then you're thinking about Scott Wright as well. You're thinking mm-hmm. about Scott. So I mean it's just it's an absolute headache and I cannot I fathom for the life of me but Gerard's got to think about in his own time he's like right what do I do right I've, I can play right there oh but then Roof can play there oh but I'm forgetting about Joe Rebo he can play there or oh, Hadji can also play there like, so many players can play in so many positions and they're so strong in their positions as well that I feel that I must have an absolute headache you picking aside uh, to play and you, you also that's what I'm on about man it's, it's thank God man what the position we're in now as I say, we don't want to get overconfident when we, we play teams like Dundee's, like, ah, we're going to bat them today or whatever. Obviously, we should be confident going into those teams. Still a difficult game, but I just think they always respect, obviously, the opposition. But wow, what headache Gerard does have, man. And just so much better position than we're in. But uh, I think we need to talk about our boy Andy Halliday, Jack. Uh, oof. Andy Halliday. What happened to him, stuff? like? Oh, listen, I tackle on my bag as a proper one. Hmm. Uh, they got off to a, a good start. Hearts um, was quite a good few games throughout the uh, Scotland this week as well. Uh, Motherwell obviously putting a good account of themselves against Hibs. Didn't expect much from Motherwell, uh, to be honest, this season. Um, Hibs obviously get the victory again. Josh Doig surprised me, actually, when I was watching that. He's away to, I think, West Ham. West Ham? Uh, aye, they could be looking at him. That's the main one I've seen. But five million as well, so mm. mental money for Hibs to get for him. But Overall, it was a good weekend uh, in the Scottish Premiership for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> but um, again, we move on uh, to, to the two games that we've talked about um, and we look forward to them. So that's all I've got today. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, I'm not really, mate. No, just, yeah, again, as always, 
thank uh, anyone for listening. Thanks for people that just support the channel, as we say. Remember mm -hmm. to like and subscribe, as Jack always said at the start. Um, always. Always, mate. Aye. Always, always. Three subscribers away yeah. now for, for the 200, so we're, we're getting there. Um, slow process, but it's all about building up, I guess. Um, and we'll be back um, for, for a, maybe a reaction to the game. Uh, I don't know if it'll be tomorrow or uh, Wednesday, but we'll be back for some sort of content on the Malmo game. And then next week again, we'll be uh, back with the podcast as well. So stay tuned for all that. Um, and I will we'll see you then. Uh, thanks for uh, liking and subscribing, as always.